Hey everyone, my name is Jax, and in this video, we're going to be going over electricity and surviving in the aftermath. And for a bit of qualifications in a sense, this is my 200% difficulty save file. Uh, you can see it's completed, we have the bunker fully done. To start off, you might be wondering, uh, well, what is electricity used in the game for? Uh, like most games, it's simply an energy source. Uh, it's used to power buildings that require it. And something to note, most buildings actually don't require electricity in this game. You can determine if a building actually needs electricity by clicking on it and looking at the description to see if there's a consumption rate. So if we were to click on, say, a house, there's no electricity usage here. There's none. Uh, but if we click on, say, an, an excavator or an extractor, uh, we could see energy consumption is 12, and it has that little sign here. So that's how you're able to determine if any buildings require it. Same for this electronics factory. Um, but, you know, these tenements don't have it. Uh, these buildings are, because these are end game buildings, but you can see they all have this energy consumption sign. Uh, same for this library. Uh, but, you know, a general storage is not going to have it. Uh, an outpost depot, food storage, you know, stuff like that. Those are not going to have it. Interestingly enough, you can actually play this game for a very long time without actually needing electricity. Timing when you get electricity is very important in this game. And that will actually segue into my next point. When is the best time to get electricity? In my opinion, the best time to get electricity in this game uh, is probably around mid game. The reason for this is that in early game, you need to be focusing a lot more on establishing your base, making sure that you are just surviving, laying out the city properly to make sure that your routes for people to take are efficient. Also scouting on your world map and the colony map to see like what's available on your map in the first place. The first buildings that you might need electricity for are probably the mechanic shop as well as the environmental station. Uh, these two buildings come usually pretty early on in the the queue for uh, research when you're looking up stuff. So we'll get parts production pretty early on in resources. And then in terms of safety, we'll get hazmat engineering around mid game, I would say. But both of these are pretty much the first buildings that will require electricity. However, if you start running out of above ground material, and you need to start building excavators like this or you know concrete or plastic or whatever it may be then you need to immediately pivot into energy production as well as industrial mining with industrial mining coming first that's the more important research to get because it's further down the line ideally you want to identify this problem before it happens and that's the importance of scouting your map to see if you're going to run out of above ground resources beforehand as you want to identify this problem before it happens and you'll see that if you are running out of above ground resources, you'll immediately need to get those techs online. So you're probably wondering, well, how do you get electricity in the first place? Like where, where do you even get it? Like how do you, how do you produce it? How do you consume it? All that stuff. Electricity is actually obtained in the infrastructure tab. Uh, and it's rough. It's going to be roughly your third tech in the infrastructure tab. It's under solar power. You'll get the solar panel. And you also get a transformer and a solar panel only works during the day and it halts during magnetic storms, but it is a cost effective way to produce renewable energy in small quantities. However, this does not transmit the power. A transformer is what transmits the energy and allows uh, transferring of energy from one place to another inside their effective radius. So this solar panel right here is doing nothing because there is no transformers in the area to actually transmit the energy. So let's go ahead and build a transformer. And it doesn't have to be next to it. It could be here as long as you have that, you see that like little yellow dotted leash, as long as it's within that range, see how it's not within the range. As long as it's within that range, it'll be transferring the energy from the solar panel to whatever building is in here that would require the energy. So let's go ahead and build it here. And I'm also going to go ahead and build another transformer over here to show you what happens if you don't have a transform or if you have a transformer without any energy production. So you can see here, we already have the transform built up, but then we have this spinning yellow uh, diamond or square 
with uh, what looks like to be an industrial transformer sign. If you click on it, it says not connected to an energy network, meaning it doesn't have a producer uh, for the energy. So a way to fix that is by providing a producer for the electricity. We could bring these two together or connect them or daisy chain them in a sense by branching the two radii together with a third transformer. So let's go ahead and do that. And then let's also go ahead and build a mechanic shop to show how the energy is produced and consumed. So here's an interesting thing. We have an energy network that is completely isolated from the rest of the base. The rest of the base is all connected to a giant energy network. However, this one is not. If we look, this is only producing six, but this requires 12. We only have one solar panel here. So if I had to guess, I think it's that even though if they're not connected to the energy network, they still get power somehow. Otherwise, they're producing it at half the rate if the energy consumption is 12. So that is something to keep in mind. I'm not exactly sure if this is how it works, but something I've noticed is that buildings can still operate under their own uh, energy networks as long as some power is being produced. It doesn't have to be 100%. But from what I'm seeing, I think the total amount of energy, your energy balance, and you can hover over your energy balance in the top left corner, as long as that is in a positive balance, your buildings should be fine, whether or not they're connected to a main uh, energy network. However, to be safe, I would connect everything to a main energy network, uh, but this is just to illustrate that this building is still operating even with uh, only half its energy requirements. So let's review. We need a transformer, and that transformer sets the effective radius of which they can transfer energy. Inside it, you need a producer and the consumer Otherwise, it will not function. Another thing you can build inside this effective radius are batteries. And the batteries will store energy and distribute it as long as they're inside an effective radius that is also could be chained, like you could see here, three transformers. Let's go ahead and go over the buildings and their costs. So you have transformer and large transformer. The difference between a small transformer and a large transformer is you could see how big of a radius difference there is between the two. In my opinion, I find that the radius is definitely worth the added material cost. With the transformer, you only have plastic, metal, and components. But with a large transformer, you have twice the amount of metal, 10 parts, no plastic, but then twice the amount of components. With a larger radius, you are spending, in a sense, you are spending less uh, resources in order to cover a large area. I do find that it is worth it for, I do find that it's worth to build large transformers. And thus, as soon as I unlock large transformers, I'll exclusively stick to large transformers. When it comes to solar panel versus large solar panel, I don't find that I typically use large solar panels or solar panels at all. Only at the beginning do I ever use solar panels as they are the first form of electricity. I might use solar panels in order to start powering up the mechanic shop, or even the environmental stations. But aside from that, I will typically rush down the wind turbine in order to get that, as it is a far more reliable source of energy than solar panels. Solar panels only function during the day, as that is when solar energy is available. However, wind turbines function day and night, as well as providing almost twice the amount of energy as a solar panel. They do have significantly more component cost being four times the amount, as well as having a parts requirement and having twice the amount of metal. Additionally, I don't really use the large solar panel because it takes up a quite bit more space and the cost for a large solar panel also includes concrete and three times the amount of component cost, although it does produce three times the amount of electricity. However, I do say that solar panels have their uses. As you can see, if you hover over them, uh, they are less vulnerable to catastrophes due to retractable panels. Or if you find that you are being attacked a lot by catastrophes or whatever it may be, perhaps solar pa large solar panels particularly are a good source of energy for you. They also don't require as much upkeep compared to wind turbines as they have moving parts and require more maintenance. And that segues into the next part, wind turbine versus large wind turbine. In my opinion, 
Uh, the large wind turbine is the end game item that you want to be building the most. They are consistent energy, and compared to a wind turbine, they're producing uh, over twice the amount of energy. And if you look at the component, or if you look at the construction costs, it's a little bit more metal, uh, almost twice the amount of parts, and twice the amount of components. However, you're getting over twice the amount of energy. The only problem with large wind turbines compared to re regular wind turbines is the footprint of the building. Yeah, the footprint of the building is much larger than a regular wind turbine, taking up roughly almost, if I had to guess, you know, three to four times the amount of space. Next, you have battery rack and large battery rack. A regular battery rack can be worth it at the beginning in conjunction with solar panels. I typically only build one or two because you don't need too much capacity during the night. You're typically able to get away with just the one building consuming about a battery rack's worth of energy. However, if you are building more buildings that require energy, you might need to build another battery rack, but you typically won't get large battery rack until later in the game anyways. However, between the two, battery racks have plastic, metal, and components compared to metal, concrete components. And if you look, you are getting three times the amount of capacity, but at the cost of almost three times the amount of components, the added cost of concrete, and roughly a little bit over two times the amount of metal uh, but no plastic cost. I typically only build maybe one or two large battery racks just to have a bit of buffer in case something bad happens. But aside from that, I typically do not build uh, too many battery racks. And lastly, uh, we have the lightning rod versus the lightning tower. If we look at the two, there is a bit of a difference between the radius of both. Here we have a lightning rod versus a lightning tower. And you can see how much of an effective radius difference this is between the two. And in my opinion, the difference between a lightning rod and a lightning tower's radius is definitely worth the cost for a lightning tower. If you hover over the two and see the construction cost of each one, you can see that a lightning rod takes metal, parts, and components. But if you go to lightning tower, it actually takes electronics plus concrete now. Electronics make it a bit more complicated because electronics require rare metals. With that being said, I still do think that it is worth it because if you look at this radius compared to this small radius, uh, it's night and day. So it's well worth the investment, especially if you're saving these uh, large wind turbines that you're spending so many resources for. With you spending so many resources, you want to protect this big investment and it is well worth the investment. You typically want to build a uh, wind farm such like this that are protected. Here's another example of a wind farm that is protected for, with a lightning tower. Uh, with the lightning tower, you have the larger radius, uh, which allows you to build more uh, wind turbines uh, in its effective radius, therefore saving you resources and land usage. And that's about it for energy. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll address it as soon as possible. Otherwise, if this helped you, I'd greatly appreciate a like and perhaps even subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I hope to see you next time and have a good one.